Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the histology of blood vessels. Now, uh, what I will be focusing on today is um, specifically arteries and veins. Uh, however, uh, a lot of the things that I talk about when it comes to veins, it will be applicable to lymphatic vessels as well. So, um, the histology of veins is very similar to lymphatic vessels, too. Okay? So, uh, in terms of the arteries and veins, um, as you can see here, what we have are two very different functions. They are both blood vessels, are types of blood vessels, but they have very different functions. So, arteries in general carry blood away from the heart, and generally that blood is at very high pressure. Uh, whereas the veins return blood to the heart, um, and the blood there is at low pressure and quite often it will flow against gravity and so uh, because of these differences in terms of what the requirements are for their function they're going to have somewhat different uh, appearances under the microscope uh, and they will be um, composed of somewhat different um, tissues okay so we'll be talking about that and again lymphatic vessels uh, have many of the same properties as veins and so again what I talk about in terms of veins and, and vein histology very much applies to lymphatic vessels. Now one of the things that you will notice when you're looking at slides of arteries and veins is that arteries because of the thickness of the muscle within their walls tend to remain open and so when you're looking at arteries under the microscope what you tend to see is a round sort of structure with a fairly thick wall. Okay, and so that wall is going to be fairly eosinophilic because you're going to have a lot of smooth muscle there um, around the outside of the lumen. Okay, whereas a vein will tend to look a lot more collapsed. It has a larger lumen. Now arteries and veins tend to kind of run together, so they tend to be found in, in groups. And so the vein itself would be, which have a much larger lumen, and will have a much thinner wall. So again, there's going to be a bit of an eosinophilic sort of standing around the outside of this but it won't be nearly as thick as it is around the artery. Okay, so there's a lot less muscle there. And because of the size of the lumen and the thinness of the wall there, it's much more likely to be collapsed. Okay, so this is an artery. And vein. So when you're looking at these things under the microscope, even at low magnification, you should be able to identify them fairly easily just by the shape and the size. Now, when we look a little closer at the organization of the, uh, of the tissues in these blood vessels, you'll see that the organization in general is fairly similar in terms of the layering pattern. And by the way, you will be noticing that as we start talking about organs and structures, the more complex structures like this, we start to talk about layering of different tissues. So you've already met all the different tissues that we need to talk about. And so now we're going to see how these tissues are arranged to make up functional units like blood vessels, for example. Okay, and so in this diagram what you have is the lumen, and then the the uh, nearest layer to the lumen is called the tunica intima, and so the tunica in the intima is composed of three layers. Okay, that's the tunica intima right here, and so the innermost layer is the endothelium, which, as you know by now, is a simple squamous epithelium. Underneath that epithelium is a little bit of connective tissue called the subendothelial connective tissue. It's a relatively loose tissue, uh, and it usually doesn't really show up as a very significant portion of the size of that wall. So when you're looking at slides, you quite often don't even notice the fact that it's there. Okay? And then, especially in arteries, we are likely to see something called the internal elastic membrane. Okay? And that's what I have here, this kind of a, a thick sort of layer here. In arteries, it is a fairly thick layer of uh, elastic fibers. It's actually a sheet of elastic fibers. It's not a fiber, but actual sheet that has small pores within it to allow for diffusion of oxygen from the lumen. So what you have are these three layers uh, together making up the layer that is known as the tunica intima. Now, beyond the internal elastic membrane, which kind of acts as a border between the tunica intima and tunica media, we have the tunica media. The tunica media is composed of smooth muscle. Okay, so smooth muscle, this is where we see the thickness of the wall. So this part right here, smooth muscle would be found in this area here. 
And so again, depending on what kind of a blood vessel you're dealing with, you will either see a very thick tunica media, which would be found in arteries, or a fairly thin tunica media with very few layers of smooth muscle, which is what you would see in veins. And then beyond the tunica media, uh, the outermost layer is called the tunica adventitia. Uh, now, don't get used to seeing the tunica adventitia as a specific thing for blood vessels. Uh, you will be seeing tunica adventitia quite frequently for the rest of this course. Uh, it just basically means the outer layer of connective tissue. Okay, and so it's a, a relatively dense connective tissue layer in the tunica adventitia. Uh, it's not very loose. Uh, it's a fairly dense one. It's not as, uh, as tough as you would find in the dermis. Um, but it's definitely a, a, a more of a dense connective tissue than loose connective tissue there. And sometimes you might notice in some blood vessels there's going to be uh, a layer of elastic fibers in between the tunica media and the tunica adventitia, and that would be the, called the, in, the external elastic membrane. So it's kind of a layer of elastic fibers out here. It tends to be visible in some of the larger blood vessels, but we don't tend to see it in the smaller blood vessels. Okay? So sometimes you will see it, see it, sometimes you won't. So that's the overall organization. Now the um, subendothelial connective tissue, again, is a fairly loose connective tissue. We've got some fibroblasts, some macrophages in there, um, and just not a lot of connective tissue. Again, it's really there just to kind of allow for easy diffusion from things from the lumen. And again, the tunica media will differ in terms of thickness. Um, in veins, you might notice a little bit more connective tissue in between layers of smooth muscle. Um, in arteries, you will sometimes notice that there's a lot of elastic fibers. We'll talk about that shortly. Okay, So there will be some differences within these different layers as we go through the different types of blood vessels. So uh, keep an eye out for that when you're trying to figure out are you looking at a, a, an artery or a vein and what kind of artery or vein. Okay. So, when we're looking at arteries, uh, we can actually try to figure out their sizes based on what we see under the light microscope. And so, we can subdivide them into large, medium, small arteries and also arterioles. And that is based really on how many layers of smooth muscle we see in tunica media. Okay, so the sizing is based really on um, number of smooth muscle layers. Um, yes, diameter is also important, but it's unlikely you'll be able to figure out the diameter based on what you're looking at under the microscope. So usually we tend to look for just number of smooth muscle layers. Okay. Now, um, again, arteries tend to be uh, differentiated from uh, veins in that what we have is a very thick tunica media. Okay. So the tunica media is the main uh, component within arteries, okay? Um, and the tunica adventitia is a little bit less prominent. Uh, the tunica intima is never really very uh, prominent in most of these blood vessels. You barely see it in most cases, uh, so don't expect to see a lot of it. Really what we tend to see with most uh, arteries and veins is just the tunica media and tunica adventitia. Uh, we know the tunica, uh, the tunica intima is present, uh, it's just not very thick in most cases, okay? And so again, uh, if you're trying to determine whether it's an artery or a vein, uh, you can look at first of all the shape uh, at low magnification. If it's looking round, then it's probably an artery. And then you're going to look at the thickness of the tunica media. Uh, if it's a fairly thick one, then uh, it's probably an artery. And again, remember that arteries and veins tend to run together, so you will usually have two blood vessels to compare to one another. Okay? So the one with the thicker tunica media is going to be the artery. The one with the thinner tunica media will be the vein. Okay? And quite frequently what we notice with arteries is that the internal elastic membrane, the IEM, tends to be quite frequently visible and very prominent in the arteries. Uh, it's a lot less prominent in veins. So even in arterioles, you will see an internal elastic membrane, uh, whereas with veins, you will see it uh, probably in just only the large veins, not so much in the medium or small sized veins, and definitely not in the venules. Okay, so even in arterioles. Okay, so this is present there. Even in arterioles, you will see internal elastic membrane. And again, this is because throughout the whole length of this vascular system, from the largest arteries to the smallest, uh, we're trying to smooth out the uh, 
pressure in blood, uh, the postal flow of blood, uh, and so that internal elastic membrane is going to help to kind of allow these arterioles even to return to their normal state after uh, a pressure has been increased and then decreased again. Because again, heart is not pumping things at a uniform rate. You have a high pressure and then low pressure. Okay. So if you're trying to figure out if you're looking at uh, a large, medium, small artery or, arteri or arterial, uh, as I mentioned, you're going to be looking at the tunica media. Now, with large arteries, it's pretty easy because large arteries are also elastic, which basically means that the tunica media has lots and lots of elastic fibers. Okay, so elastic in tunica media. Okay, and so large arteries tend to be things like the aorta and also some of the branches. Okay, so some of the arteries that branch off from the aorta initially uh, will also be elastic arteries initially. Um, and as the, as the blood flows further and further away from the heart, uh, that pressure of the, the, the blood is actually decreased over time. And so we need less and less elasticity in those blood vessels. And so over time, as we go further away from the aorta, these blood vessels will lose those elastic fibers in the tunica media, and eventually they will be classified as muscular arteries or medium arteries. So medium arteries uh, are generally muscular arteries. Whereas once you don't see much elastic fibers within the tunica media, you could classify the artery as a medium-sized artery. Now, uh, in terms of the, num the layering, uh, what you're looking at here is probably about 20 layers of smooth muscles. Smooth muscle. Okay. So if you're looking at an artery that doesn't have any elastic fibers but has about 10 to 20 layers of smooth muscle, you're looking at a medium sized artery. Once you get to an artery that has, you know, something like 5 to 10 layers of smooth muscle, then you're looking at a small artery. Okay, and by the time you get to an arterial, that tunica media is really composed of maybe one to two cells. One to two cell layers. Okay, so one to two layers of smooth muscle in the tunica media. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the opposite end of the spectrum, in the veins. Uh, again, we're looking at the thickness and composition of the layers. And here, again, in veins, what we're looking at is the tunica media has very few layers, so it's not a very prominent layer. Uh, in the tunica, uh, sorry, in the veins, tunica adventitia is really the most prominent component. Um, and so we need to see that the most. The tunica media, uh, sorry, the tunica adventitia is composed of connective tissue, so uh, it's not really meant to be able to withstand a lot of. Um, or be able to stretch very much. Again, veins are not dealing with a lot of pressure inside them anymore, uh, but they need to be able to collapse. And so in general, the walls of veins are fairly thin. This way, when you compress the muscles around those veins, uh, they can compress the vein and collapse them and cause the blood to flow, okay? So you have the tunica dentitia being the thickest layer, but again, it's not gonna be very thick. It's basically just the most prominent part of that vein. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the internal elastic membrane in veins is rarely visible, so you don't really see it very frequently. Uh, you might see it in some of the large veins, like the vena cava, uh, but you're unlikely to see it anywhere else. Um, I think you'll notice here that there is something called a vas of a sorum. Uh, the vas of a sorum is Latin for vessel of a vessel. Which basically means blood vessels. blood vessels which are feeding these veins. Uh, again, remember, generally uh, veins are carrying oxygen-poor blood, and so um, the veins themselves will also need to be fed. The cells within those veins, within that tunica media, the tunica adventitia, all those cells need to be fed. They all need to have oxygen access accessible to them, and so they will need to have their own blood supply because they are carrying oxygen-poor blood they will have arteries and capillaries passing through the, the walls of these veins uh, 
uh, to feed some of those cells, and that's referred to as a vasa vasorum. Okay. Now, in terms of sizes, again, we're looking at the large veins are elastic, so we will see some elastic fibers within the vena cava, but we really won't see much beyond that. So the medium vein, small vein, and venules do not have much elasticity within them, and we're just basically dealing with very thin layers of smooth muscle and tunica media and a bit more um, elaborate uh, or thicker tunica adventitia. So in terms of um, uh, numbers of layers to help you, again, Usually if you're looking at a medium artery, there's going to be a medium vein next to it. If you're looking at a small artery, there's going to be a small vein next to it. So quite often, classification is fairly easy. Once you've classified one of them, the other one is pretty easy to classify. Uh, but just to give you an idea, uh, with a medium-sized vein, you're looking at about two to three layers. Maybe a little bit more. Um, maybe going up is maybe high. Yeah. Be as high as five. layers of smooth muscle. Um, small veins, also about two to three layers, really. I would say one to two layers, really. One to three layers of smooth muscle in tunica media. Uh, the venules usually don't have any smooth muscle. Um, you might see one cell in some of the larger venules. Um, usually there's a uh, difference between uh, a venule that is a larger one and a post-capillary venule, which is what collects blood from the capillary. Uh, post-capillary venules do not have any smooth muscle around them, but just have, they look like capillaries, but they are just simply very wide lumen compared to a capillary. So uh, the size of the lumen, let me just maybe make that in a different color. The lumen size here is about 10 to 100 micrometers diameter for a venue. Uh, for a small vein, uh, it'd go anywhere from 100 micrometers or 0 0.1 millimeters to about 1 millimeter. Okay, uh, medium-sized veins goes from anywhere between 1 millimeter to 10 millimeters. Oh, not 1 meter. Uh, and a vena cava would be something larger than a centimeter, okay? And so with a vena cava, you have zero, oh, sorry, uh, venules, let me just complete this. So with a venule, you have zero to one smooth muscle layer in tunica media, okay? Uh, with um, vena cava, you probably have about 15 layers or so. And again, these are not well, you know, hard numbers. These are just, in general, overall, you might see something like this of smooth muscle. And again, with a vena cava, you'd probably be seeing some elastic fibers within that tunica media, so that will be a, a giveaway there. Okay? Now let me just go back really quickly to the artery slide just to give you some sizes here. Um, Arterioles, we're looking at probably about also 10 to 100 micrometers. Micrometers, small artery. Uh, we're looking at a diameter of 0 0.1 to 2 millimeters. Uh, again, this may not be terribly useful for microscopy because you're usually not going to be able to just measure um, these things very easily uh, except for capillaries. Capillaries are pretty easy to measure uh, some of the arterioles and venules as well because we have red blood cells in them that will help us to measure things properly. Okay, uh, And again um, probably more than one centimeter would be more than one centimeter would be the aorta and some of the large arteries. Okay. Let's take a look at them in terms of the histology now. So here is a low power um, micrograph of the aorta. So we're looking here at the lowest um, magnification I could get on this microscope. And so what you're seeing here is the lumen is on the right hand side. So the lumen is over here. Okay. And so what you have is this kind of a 
a wavy band showing up in this area here. Okay, so this wavy band, if you follow this all the way down, this is the internal elastic membrane. Internal elastic membrane. So basically, this whole region here is the tunica intima. Where's that A? Come on. Oh. So that's the tunica intima. Okay. Now you will notice, hopefully, that there's a difference in staining from here. I'm trying maybe using yellow again. From roughly here on the left hand side, all the way towards that tunica, uh, that internal elastic membrane. A bit of a difference in staining here, and we see these kind of wavy bands showing up in layers. So we see these layers of wavy bands, these elastic fibers that we're seeing here. So we're looking at an elastic artery. All of this is the tunica media. Okay, so it's the middle layer that's got the muscle, a smooth muscle. So basically between each one of these layers of elastic fibers you have a layer of smooth muscle. And then at the left side of this, from this point onwards to the left, is the tunica adventitia. Okay, so tunica adventitia here is kind of broken up a little bit, um, but basically it would continue onwards a little bit but again in this case of this magnification you can see that the tunica media is a very significantly thick layer and again if you were to try to maybe count the layers of smooth muscle in between the layers of elastic fibers you probably would count about 40 or so layers of smooth muscle here okay let's zoom in on this just so we can take a look at tunica intima because you're not going to see it in many other slides here so we zoom in here again this is the lumen over here and so the internal elastic membrane, let me just highlight that for you. Maybe I'll use the highlighter for this. So right here we have the internal elastic membrane. So that's that first layer of elastic fibers that's visible here. And you can, you can see more of these layers of, of elastic fibers as you go in here as well. So within the tunica media, you have more and more of these bands of elastic fibers. And again, um, this is because it's an elastic artery that we're looking at here. Okay, So you have lots of these layers. And again, between them, you have lots of smooth muscle. Okay, But again, that initial layer here on the inside from here to here will be the subendothelial connective tissue. Connective tissue. And we have an endothelium on the surface. So we have a simple squamous epithelium at the surface. So endothelium. Now, right Maybe try to outline it in black here. Right here, we have a red blood cell. Okay, so there's a red blood cell right there at the surface, so you can see the size of a red blood cell compared to the thickness of this thing. Red blood cells, R, B, C. Diameter is about 7 micrometers. Okay, so based on that red blood cell, you can try to measure the thickness of some of these layers. Okay. Again, you cannot measure the size of the lumen here because the whole lumen, the whole blood vessel, did not actually fit on this slide. It's much, much larger. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. Uh, let's contrast what we're seeing here with uh, the vena cava. Okay. So let's move on. And again, we're going to look at first at the lowest magnification I could find of the vena cava. So we have um, one of the large veins here. So again, this is the lumen over here on the right hand side 
That means that the endothelium is over here. Okay, and now if you look carefully, uh, you will notice that there is a bit of a wavy band showing up right around here. well. It's not as prominent as it was in the artery, in the aorta, but it's visible. That's that first little band. Okay, so that means that basically from here to here is the tunica intima. That's the innermost layer. Now, what I want you to notice here is that we have, I'm going to highlight the maybe in red here, a layer of smooth muscle. You can see these elongated cells. Okay. Going up and down. Again, we're looking at a cross section here, so we're just not seeing the whole thing all the way through. But around here we have these nuclei that are elongated that are kind of going up and down in this uh, section. This region right here is the tunica media that I just highlighted for you. Okay, so that is the tunica media. So from around here all the way to this interelastic membrane, this region right here, I think I'll use yellow just to make that a bit more distinct. This right here is the tunica media. here, tunica. Okay, everything else that you're seeing, I mean, again, I'll just use the highlighter just so I can go from the edge of this all the way out here. All of this. the tunica adventitia. Okay, so you can see very significant difference in the thickness of this layer compared to the tunica media in this case. So very typical of especially the vena cava. Now this is actually a very special case. Uh, the vena cava is a little unusual uh, when it comes to veins in that you actually have smooth muscle present in the tunica adventitia as well. But in this case, this muscle is actually running parallel to the length of the blood vessel, so it's actually going to be seen in cross section here. So, uh, some of these bundles that you're seeing here, let me just highlight a couple of them in yellow. So, all of this here okay. that's smooth muscle. Okay, that's here's another bundle of smooth muscle over here. So again, you have a bundle of smooth muscle here, bundle of smooth muscle here. So we have these clusters of smooth muscle visible here. And in between them, you have these more eosinophilic fibers, right? And that's the connective tissue. So this material here, this material here it surrounds these bundles. Those are elastic, uh, not elastic, sorry, that's collagen fibers. So this is a fairly dense connective tissue that we're seeing here surrounding these. Okay, so this is connective tissue, and again, these yellow and smooth. And you're seeing it here in cross section. Okay, and this is uh, the unusual feature of vena cava, so if you see that on a slide, you know you're looking at the vena cava. It's pretty easy to identify. Let's zoom in on the vena cava so you can see a little bit more detail near the surface. So again, the lumen is on the right-hand side. We have an endothelial cell here. We can see this 
band, this wavy band here, that's elastic. So this is elastic fibers. So this is the internal, let me just switch over to red here, internal elastic working for me here right now, this interelastic membrane, okay? And so that means that all of this here is the tunica intima, tunica intima. Come on. Okay, again, notice the, let me just highlight them, smooth muscle fibers arranged in longitudinal section here. This is the tunica media. Okay, so it's not very thick. You can see we have these fibers as tunica media. And then everything beyond this, from this point, is the marker again, highlighter. Everything from this point over to the left is the tunica adventitia. Okay. Now I'd like to point out something right here. So right here we have this kind of circular structure with a nucleus right there. So an endothelium. It's like a pillory. Okay. So a small blood vessel, possibly a venule. Um, so again, this is that vasovasorum. Okay, so uh, that's that vessel of a vessel. So again, you can see here how close it is to the lumen, and all these cells nearby here need to get their nutrients from these blood vessels that are present here because there's very little oxygen. Um, so sorry, oxygen, they're getting them because there's very little oxygen in the actual vena cava itself. Okay, let's move on and look at a couple more examples before we finish. So here are some smaller blood vessels than what we were just looking at. And so you can see here uh, a group of blood vessels. And so again, uh, you can see this lumen is much more collapsed here, more elongated, whereas this one over here is much more rounded. So we're looking at an artery here, and there's a vein over here, okay? There is another artery that's much smaller. Um, highlight that in yellow here. So we have an artery right there. Oops. That's a lot smaller. Okay? So let me erase these things so you can look at them in a bit more detail. So. Again, what we're looking at here are the clusters of these vessels. They're running together, and so we have an artery here that stretches from here to here. That's the wall of the artery. Kind of roughly make it out. Now, this has been stained for elastic fibers, so you can see here that the connective tissue around the outside here has the tunica adventitia. The rest of it is connective tissue that connects with other things. But this seems to be, you know, roughly where the adventitia would end for this particular artery. And so again, tunica media is much thicker than tunica adventitia. But you'll notice that there are no elastic fibers within tunica media. So this is, would be a medium-sized artery. Okay. Also known as this thick band right at the surface. That's the internal elastic membrane. And again, you can see it very obviously here in this artery. It's still present in this vein but you can see that it's a lot less obvious. Okay, now, now both of these vessels are relatively close to some of the larger arteries and veins, and so uh, they're kind of a continuation of that, okay? If we zoom in on these, uh, so let's zoom in on the artery first, you can see here this is the endothelium right there. Then underneath that endothelium, so especially you can see the endothelium here, endothelial cells, Underneath that endothelium, there is a very small amount of connective tissue. You can see that over here, for example. There's a bit of connective tissue in here. There's a bit of connective tissue right there as well. 
between the endothelium and that internal elastic membrane. So this is the subendothelial connective tissue. Okay, uh, and again, that thick band that you're seeing there, this wavy band here, that's the internal elastic membrane. Okay, internal elastic membrane, which basically means that everything from here all the way to here, which this is the external elastic membrane, EEM, okay, so this is the tunica media. Okay, so I wanted to show you this one because, again, this is as much of the subendothelial connective tissue as you're going to see in most slides. You're not going to see it getting much thicker than this, so don't expect to see a lot of it. Uh, you're going to be mostly seeing just the tunica media and tunica adventitia, which is this stuff here, that's tunica adventitia. Okay, and again, all this stuff that you're seeing out here are a lot of the elastic fibers that are still present here as well. Okay, let's take a look at the vein in, again, the same vein that we just saw earlier at low magnification. Again, you can see the lumen is over here. Okay, as you can see, lots of red blood cells and a few white blood cells in there. And again, we have an internal elastic membrane. It's not very prominent, and it's going to get even less prominent as we get into smaller and smaller veins. You can see here that we do have some smooth muscle in tunica media. Okay, notice that the smooth muscle fibers aren't as tightly packed as they are um, as they were in that, uh, that artery we just saw. Okay, so there's a little bit of connective tissue in between them as well. Okay, so that's our tunica media here, and then we have the tunica adventitia on the outside here. So that's tunica adventitia out here, tunica adventitia. Okay, and tunica media over here. Again, it doesn't seem like the tunica media is, is thinner than tunica adventitia, but again, it's just that we happen to be taking a section in this, or took a picture in this area uh, that may not necessarily follow the rules, but you can see uh, that the tunica media doesn't have as many uh, layers of smooth muscle as you saw in the, uh, in the artery. That part at least is pretty obvious. Okay, so that's... Uh, medium to large vein. Again, it's a probably medium vein, um, but it's a relatively large in terms of the scale of medium veins. Here's another example of an artery and vein passing together. Again, a lot of this here is adipose tissue. So it's just on the outside, and so you have a cluster of blood vessels running together, and again, you can see that the blood vessel uh, on the right is an artery. A bit more of an elongated, sorry, a little bit more of a rounded new uh, lumen. I'm going to highlight the lumen here for the vein. It actually continues out here, kind of bends. And again, notice the thickness of the wall around each one of these things. So this is the vein. Okay. So the wall of the artery is about this thick. Okay. And the wall of the vein is about here to here. Okay, so it's not as thick as the artery, obviously. And again, you, this one wasn't stained for elastic fibers, but you can see that there is a very thin layer that looks like a, a wavy band right near the surface. That's the elastic fibers, that's the internal elastic membrane. So even in a small artery like this, you can see the internal elastic membrane, internal elastic membrane. We don't see the internal elastic membrane in the vein here, okay? And so lastly, we have capillaries. Uh, now, these can be subdivided into continuous, fenestrated, and sinusoids, um, or discontinuous capillaries, also known as discontinuous. Okay, and so Really, what the differences are in terms of the basement membrane and the endothelium. Continuous capillaries are what they sound like. They have a continuous basement membrane and an endothelial layer, which is also continuous. So these do not allow things to pass across very easily. And so what we're dealing with here is generally uh, diffusion of very, very small things. So you're looking at oxygen diffusing, so O2 
leaving these capillaries or entering these capillaries depending on where you are. Uh, so again, you would find these in places where you only need to have very simple exchanges like gas. Okay, so uh, in places like the, the lungs, for example, you would have a lot of continuous capillaries. Um, in places where you need to have very tight control over what passes across, you would also have continuous capillaries. So for example, in your brain, you have lots of continuous capillaries because uh, you have tight control over what passes across. Either you have gases diffusing or the cell will actually use something called pinocytotic vesicles. to transport things across. And again, this requires more energy, and so there's very tight control over what is allowed to pass across that endothelium. With fenestrated capillaries, you have these wherever you have to have, uh, this is efficient transport. Okay, so places like your small intestine, for example, what you would have is nutrients passing across into these capillaries so that you would have easy uh, access for nutrients to get into the bloodstream in small intestine. Okay, uh, other places where you would have these is in your um, in a variety of en endocrine glands. So endocrine glands again, another place where you're generating hormones. These hormone molecules are relatively small, but they're still too large to just simply diffuse across the membrane. So they will need to have easy access to the bloodstream. And so again, you would have these fenestrated capillaries there. These continuous capillaries are found in places where you have filtration. So, um, or you need to have easy entry into the bloodstream or easy exit from the bloodstream for cells. So whole cells are able to pass across this. So you have these large gaps that allow whole cells to either exit or enter. So in your bone marrow, for example, you would have red blood cells being produced there, white blood cells being produced there. They would enter the bloodstream using these discontinuous capillaries. In your liver, you have a detoxification organ, and so you have uh, uh, materials within your bloodstream that would come into contact directly with your liver cells, and so they have to exit the bloodstream. Uh, same goes in the in the spleen. You also will have uh, an area where you will have to have an area where you have cells exiting uh, the bloodstream and coming to direct contact with the cells that are doing the filtration in your spleen. Okay, so. Uh, depending on the function, you're going to have these different types of capillaries. Now, continuous and discon and sorry, continuous and fenestrated capillaries are very similar to each other. They just have very tiny little difference between them in terms of their appearance, uh, and you won't see that under the light microscope. So the difference would be visible under the electron microscope, but not the light microscope. And these are generally between about six to ten micrometers in diameter. So just large enough to pass uh, to allow a red blood cells to pass to pass through them. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit smaller than that typical red blood cells, so they can go as small as about four micrometers. Sinusoids are quite a bit larger, so a sinusoid is typically uh, about 30 to 40, 40 micrometers in diameter. Okay, um, so uh, it's a much larger structure. This allows things to slow down, so blood flow slows down within these things, and that's ideal for having filtration happen. Let's take a look at some pictures really quick before I finish. So this is an example of a, a fenestrated capillary. And this is an electron micrograph so that you can actually see the fenestrations. And so I'm going to use yellow here to kind of highlight areas where you have kind of these small little gaps showing up. Or maybe I'll use red. That's not really showing up very well here. So right here, you have these gaps where the, the actual cell membrane gets thin and all you have in between the little bits of cell membrane is just little slit. Okay, and these slits are referred to as diaphragms, and they just close off the opening so that you have some control over the passage of things across. Okay, so here these are called diaphragms. Okay, and again they can open and close to allow for easy transport of things across that endothelium. Okay, and again you can see a red blood cell here. So you can see that the diameter of this capillary is just large enough to pass, to allow a red blood cell to pass across. No, to pass through it, rather than not pass across. And so here's an example of uh, the skin, from the skin. And what you're seeing here is probably mostly venules. Uh, you can see a couple of red blood cells here. So the diameter of these things is quite a bit larger than just a single red blood cell. But right here you can see a simple squamous epithelium, 
And there's a bit of a thin branch here. So this right here is likely to be just wide enough for red blood cells. So this probably would be a capillary here. And this is a venule. Most likely. And again, there's more of them over here. Um, there's another one over here. Okay, so again, what we're seeing are some small blood vessels found within the skin, within the dermis of the skin. Okay? And this next image is going to be very confusing. This will make a lot more sense, I hope, uh, after you have uh, learned about lymphatic system and the spleen. Okay, what we're looking at here is the spleen. Uh, and so the areas where you see a lot of red blood cells, like this area over here, area over here that's a sinusoid there's another one over here okay so you can see there's lots of red blood cells there very closely packed together that is the inside of a blood vessel Okay. Now you'll also notice that there are red blood cells uh, that are in between other cells. Okay, and so here, for example, we have lots of red blood cells, but we also have lots of nucleated cells. Okay, so what we're looking at in this area. Maybe I'm just use the highlighter with a different color. Over here, is the solid part of the spleen. Okay, this part is referred to as a splenic cord. This is the solid part where you have lots of cells that are doing the filtration, and so the red blood cells are basically exiting the bloodstream and entering into the splenic cords okay uh, whereas the stuff highlighted in yellow these are splenic sinuses okay and so red blood cells are coming in through this very wide capillary which has openings which has wide gaps within it and so cells can easily exit that splenic sinus and enter into that splenic cord okay so again, we'll learn more about this when we talk about the lymphatic system. All right, so I'll, I'll finish here. We'll see you in the next video.